Hallelujah. Come on and give him praise on today. Hallelujah. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on and lift him up today. Hallelujah. Zion, lift up your voices for the Lord today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, this is Cornerstone Deliverance Church. This is our 12 noon worship service every Sunday. Amen. And we're located at 830 Pepperidge Road in Westbury. And we invite you out to come out and worship with us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord. I thank God on today for being able to be in his presence just one more time. Hallelujah. You will find that there were some that desired to wake up but did not wake up. Hallelujah. And I thank God on today that he saw fit to breathe on me just one more time. Amen. That I can be, amen, in the land of the, of the living. Amen. Just, just, just one more day. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm still not sure if it's going to be for the whole day, but I'm going to work it in the time in which he had given me. Amen. That he may be glorified. Amen. So I just thank him on that today. For that today. Amen. Hallelujah. Today, I want us to turn to the scripture text is going to come from um, the gospel of John. Amen. And we're going to turn to chapter 14. And the first scripture that we're going to read is 15. And then we're going to jump down to 21 through 26. Amen. I told you that the Holy Spirit is not keeping us long today, but we do know that all things are subject to change according to his move. So it's my belief that he won't keep us long based on what it is that he had given me. Amen. For the service. But of course, we're going to be led by him. And verse 14, 15 says, verse 15 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And verses 14, chapter 14, verses 21 through 26 says, He who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. And then he goes on to say, Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself unto us and not unto the world? And Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He who loves me not keeps not my sayings and the word which you hear is not mine but the father's which sent me amen so we find here in this text that jesus christ he did not speak on his own behalf but he spoke on behalf of the father amen hallelujah and i love how the text said that those that love me, that they sh will keep my commandments, and, and that those that love him not will not keep the commandments of God. So we know that the word has led us to know that there is a provision in the word of God that tells us those that love the Lord, that one cannot just come and, and, and say out of their mouth that I love the Lord, and we believe it, but the word of God teaches us to try every spirit by the spirit for those that are lovers of Jesus Christ like he said that they will be keepers of the commandment that they're not just doers of the word but they they're not just hearers of the word but they're also doers of the word meaning that they carry it out in their everyday life that they apply it amen that before they do anything that they lean not on their own understanding but they that they, they, they acknowledge God that he may direct their path isn't that right Hallelujah. So the, 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 the message on today is, what is it in the word? Amen. What is it in the word? Uh, what is it in the word? Hallelujah. Because there's many words. I know that man, he got his own word and his own sayings. Amen. And then we know that in, in, in Genesis, God spoke to Adam and he said unto Adam, all oh, that you see in the garden, Eastern Eden, I have given unto you to eat. Amen. But he told Adam that that tree in the midst of the garden, the tree that has the fruit of the wisdom and knowledge of good and evil, that tree you're not to eat from. 
with her husband. Amen. He didn't catch her alone like some would suppose. And Adam was on one side of the garden and Eve was on the other. For the word of God says that the husband was right there with her. And the enemy began to question her and began to ask her what it is that God said. Did God say not to eat? And Eve went on to begin to tell him that he said not to eat or touch the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or you will surely die. And then the devil had a word that was contrary to God's word and said that you will surely not die. So there's something in the word. Hallelujah. And there's something in the word that we submit to and that word is going to birth something. Huh? That word is either going to birth life or that word is going to birth death. Amen. That what you water is is, 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 is what will grow. Hallelujah. And I tell you, the only way that you can water those spiritual things is that you must water it with the word of God. The only thing that you can have, the only way that you can have spiritual things planted is that you must plant the seed of God's word. Amen. Because if you plant anything else or if you try to water it with anything else, something else is going to grow and we call that weed. Hallelujah. We don't need no weeds in the garden. Hallelujah. So what I did was I looked up word in the Webster's Dictionary to hear what it is that Webster had to say about just the word word. And it said the spoken sign of a conception or an idea, an articulate or vocal sound that is just or a combination of articulate and vocal sounds uttered by the human voice and by custom expressing an idea or idea, single component, part of human speech or language, constituent part of a sentence, a term, or a, voca a vocality, a, voca a vocable. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen for the correction. And then I looked up a prophetic word, and a prophetic word is the prophet's um, of old, they delivered the word of God for this purpose. They were commissioned to deliver the word of God. And this prophetic word of God addressed human beings and demanded a response. So we find that when there's a prophetic word from God, God demands a response based on the word that it is that he delivers through his vessel. Thus God's word may be visualized as a great salvation Amen. And I want you to remember that we said his word can be visualized as a great salvation or his word can be a great judgment. Amen. Amen. So there's a legal word. And, and in the covenant of the Lord, God spoke the words of the Lord to Moses. And the heart of the Lord is called the ten words. Amen. And the entire law represents the will of God and so can be called a single word. And this word also demands a response and faithful obedience will bring God's blessings. And while disobedience will lead to what? A curse. Amen. So we find that even in the Mosaic law, the legality of the law, that if you are obedient to the word of God, you are blessed. And if you was disobedient to the word of God, it brought on the judgment of God, which is a curse. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to look at the creative word. Amen. Because there is a creative word. It says God created the world by his word. Amen. This reveals God's majesty and thus extends the sphere of his revelation beyond his work with covenant Israel to all people. Amen. That it was not just given unto Israel. It started out that Israel was the first fold, but then he brought in the second fold, the Gentiles. So it, it went from the covenant of Israel to all people. The word is spoken of of everyone that believed that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior and that he resurrected. The word is spoken of as if it were a person who directs the events of nature and gives life. Now we remember that when Jesus Christ walked on water or when he arose from the boat when he was sleeping and the disciples came unto him and told him how do you sleep when there is a storm and they was astonished because he was one that was able to tell the storm to hold his peace amen peace be still and he had control over the winds and over nature 
and they was concerned about that, but that's Jesus. Huh? As we continue to read, you will find that Jesus Christ, he is the word of God, amen? He is the very word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Huh? And I heard the word of God say that those of us huh, that really love the Lord, that truly love the Lord, huh, that we are obedient to his word, hallelujah. So we find here that logos or rima are are the two primary Greek words meaning word. So you find that in the New Testament because the New Testament originated from the Greek language and the Old Testament originated from the Hebrew language, but they are used interchangeable and vicariously with the Old Testament word debar that also means word. The New Testament can use these words to apply to Jesus' message, the message about Jesus and Jesus himself. And we're here to tell you that the message about Jesus is the good news. That is the crucifixion, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you that he himself, he is the good news. Amen. So when we preach the good news, when we share the good news, amen, when we carry the good news, we carry the very presence of Jesus Christ. Why? Because he himself, he is the word. You cannot separate God from his word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So now we're going to touch on just a little bit uh, the power of the word. The word of God does have power. God's word has a mysterious binding authority. For as the rain, and you'll find this in Isaiah 55, 10 through 12, for those of you that would like to turn to it and jot it down. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth and making it bear and sprout and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so will my words be, be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it to do. For you will go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The word of God is the gospel of peace. Amen. Huh? The mountains and the hills will break forth into shouts of joy before you and the trees of the field will clap their hands. Amen. So we find here that the word of God has power. What God sends his word out to do that it does not return unto him empty but it goes forth and it accomplishes the very thing that he sent it to do. Amen. And I found that in the word of God that he sent his word out to, to, to wrap himself in flesh and dwell among us. And we beheld his glory. Amen. He sent the word of God, Jesus Christ, the logos to pay our sin debt, to be crucified. Hallelujah. To die in our place. Hallelujah. To pay the debt that man could not pay. And I'm grateful for that on today. Hallelujah is the word. And someone pull up Hebrews 4 and 12 because we're going to get God's meaning of the word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We know that in John 1, um, the Holy Spirit revealed that in the beginning was the word and that the word was with God and that the word is God huh? and that everything that was made was made by him or it just does not exist. Amen. So, so we know that the word is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But what does Hebrews 4.12 say about the word? I want someone to read it. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even a dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. So what I find today that it is the word of God that's living and active. It's not dead. It's quick. Amen. And it, and, and, and it goes out and it penetrates. The word of God says it will penetrate your heart. Amen. It separates. Amen. It separates bone and marrow. And it separates those spiritual things from, from the fleshly things, from those emotional things. Amen. It separates the spiritual things from, from the flesh. Amen. The word of God and only the word of God can do this. Man cannot do this. Man cannot reason this. Man cannot understand it. It takes the word of God. Huh? That's the importance of those of us that are preachers and teachers of the word that we don't water it down, that we deliver it, deliver it just the way God said that we should. Huh? Just as she, he has it written in his word that he died on the cross for our sins and when he died he made us a called out people called out of sin to live a life of righteousness unto
unto him. Hallelujah. So I just want to get back to, we spoke about there being different words. We spoke about there being words of men. Let's touch on words of men for a minute. For words of men, amen, words therefore that are diligently tested, amen. The word of God says that we are to try every spirit by the spirit to see whether the person is speaking by human spirit, by demonic spirit, or by Holy Spirit, amen. So we know that men, they have their own words. We know that the Greeks, they were philosophers, amen, and they had they, they had nice sayings, amen. And some of us today, we can get caught up in these things and believing that these, these words are nice words, amen. They may even make you feel good, but they don't give you life, amen. The words of men ain't going to give you life, amen. Huh? Hallelujah, they may guide you a little bit and they cause you to do some things right, huh? but these words don't change your sin condition. Huh? And we have to remember that, that these are words of men that sometimes they're just flu foolish words. They're words of flattery, right? Yeah. Words of deceit. They're words spoken while the heart was not with you. Amen. They act like they're with you, but but they're not really with you. These are these are words of men. This is how Jesus described the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes. For for they spoke of God with their mouth, but their heart was just not with God. They had not the heart of God. They did not have a heart of flesh, but they truly had a rebellious heart. Amen. Amen. We find that men will speak with words of enticement, huh? words of counsel given for the counselor's advantage and not for God's advantage. Amen. Huh? That words of wisdom, sometimes they will speak with, but we're not talking about a godly divine wisdom because we know that men think that they're wise in their own eyes, but God sent the foolishness of preaching the gospel to confound the wisdom of the world. So we find that men, they speak with words of lies and rumors impious and blasphemous and in his speech um, we're all recognized amen but we have to remember on today that, that if we give in to that word that there is no life in that word we have to be discerned of what word is true amen and I heard the word of God say that only his word is true let God be the truth and let every man be alive that only God's word is true. So we have to make sure that the word that's, that, 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 that the voice that we hear that is speaking to us, that the word that they're given be the word of God and not their own word. Amen. We have to make sure that nothing else is being whispered into our ears. So we have to guard our ear gates huh? and our eye gates. And we have to remember. Beloved, we have to remember that only the word of God is bringing life. Only the word of God is birthing forth that which will cause for us to live and that which will cause for us to birth the fruit of the spirit, that which will cause for us to walk in his character. How do we know this? Well, we know this because in Eden, the serpent, the word of God calls him Satan. He calls him a liar. He calls him a premeditated murderer. The word of God says that he's out to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. And I hear my spiritual father say that those are the agents of Satan out to kill, steal, and destroy. That Satan is a premeditated murderer. So we find that in the garden, he was out to, to murder the very the very thing that God has given unto man. And he was out to murder their spiritual life. But God told them that if you eat of the fruit, of the tree, of knowledge and good and evil, that you will surely die. But the enemy came in with the word that you will surely not die. And man, with the lust of the eye, check your eyes out, hallelujah. Don't be lusting after or wanting or longing for anything that is contrary to the word of God. And the only way that you would know if it's contrary to the word of God is that you first must know what the word of God says. Because I heard the word say that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So for lack of knowledge, are we destroyed? And then I heard the word of God say that um, disobedience births birth sin and the wages of sin is death. Right. Amen. 
So I don't hear the word of God speak about a process, that your process is that you have a lack of knowledge, that you have a, a lack of understanding, amen, and the word of God says that you shall perish. And then the word of God says that either you know the word and you understand the word, but you're just being disobedient to the word. So if you could spend 20 hours working a job, amen, a day, amen, and there's only 24 hours in the day, but not give no time to God in prayer and in his word, amen, what are you watering? The word of God says that you got, you cannot serve two masters. That either you're going to serve God or you're going to serve mammon. Either you're going to serve God or you're going to serve money. Either you're going to serve God or you're going to serve them. Pick and choose this day who you will serve. The word of God tells us that those who you lend your extremities to, that's who you serve. So you can, can proclaim them all you want with your mouth, but if you're lending your extremities to something else, amen, that is whom you serve. So we find here that, that Satan had a word. And he had a word that was contrary to God's word. He told them that they would surely not die. And, and he was after their spirituality. He was after that connection that they had with God. After God told them that they would surely die. And after they ate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For God did not desire for man to know good and evil. Amen. Huh? But once they saw that it was that the tree was good for knowledge. And, and it was desirable to the eye which God already said. That everything in the garden was good looking. So that was nothing new unto them. Amen. But it was in the disobedience. And they took the word of the creature over the creator. And guess what? It began to birth something. Man died spiritually instantly. But what birthed? The works of the flesh birthed. The word of Satan bursts the works of the flesh. If you truly be in Christ, and if you are in submission to the word of God, obedient to the word of God, if this is the word that you that, that, that you that you plant within your spirit, and that you water day after day, hour after hour, minute after minute, it should birth the fruit of the, the fruit of the of spirit, amen? But 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 something else is birthing here. And something else is birthing because you're giving into another kingdom system. And once they, 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 they gave into the word of Satan, they died spiritually instantly and, 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 and they, they had not procreated. So everything after that was born in sin and shaped in iniquity, the works of the flesh was birthed. There was adultery that was birthed. There was fornication that was birthed. Amen. Huh? So if you be in Christ and you still proclaiming Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and adultery is going on and fornication is going on, you have to watch what you're watering. Amen. Uncleanness was birthed. Lasciviousness was birthed. Idolatry was birthed. You find that witchcraft is part of the fallen flesh before it becomes demonic, and that was birthed. Huh? Hatred was birthed. Variance was birthed. Huh? Was birthed. You find that emulations huh? was birthed through them eating the wrong word, huh? giving it to the wrong world, meditating on the wrong word. Huh? You find that wrath, strife, and seditions was birthed. Heresies, envies, murderers. Drunkenness and revelings, you don't have to make an excuse on getting drunk off of wine. The word of God said you could be drunk in the spirit all day. If you desire to get in the word, get in prayer, amen, get connected to the true vine. Huh? Get with the source that will make the fruit of the spirit be birthed in you. Huh? But if any of these other things are going on in you, huh, you will find that the that you are uh, 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 partaking in the wrong work. You ain't doing nothing different than what they did in Eden. Because the word of God says come as you are. But once you come as you are, and you believe in Jesus Christ and crucified and then resurrected, it brings about a change. Grace brings change, ain't that? Come as you are in your grave clothes. Huh? Come as you are, hallelujah, huh? with your street walking clothes. Huh? Come as you are with your lying mindset. Huh? But once you come, you cannot leave the same way that you came in. And he says, in such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. 
if you're fornicating, if you're committing adultery, if, if covetousness is in your heart, I'm telling you, there's a whole host of things here. And then I begin to pick it up from the message Bible and pertaining to the works of flesh. And it says, it is obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. So if we be in Christ, it's no longer us having our own way because we're trying to live this thing God's way. In order to know what God's way is, we have to be in the word of God to know what his way is. Uh, but the message Bible says that those that are, that, are, that are moving in the ropes of the flesh, that they're trying to have their own way. And that way is a repetitive, loveless, cheap sex, the word of God said. It said a stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage. It says frenzied and joyless grabs for happiness and trinket gods. My God. It says magic show and religion. It says that what is birthing in you is a paranoid loneliness, a cutthroat competition, and all consuming yet never satisfied wants. Amen? So you, you're getting but you're never satisfied. Amen? Hearing but, the, but you're never understanding. A brutal temper and impotence to love or to be loved. So what he's saying here is that you can't give love and you can't receive love because you're too busy trying to have it your way instead of learning what God's way is. It says you have divided homes and divided lives that you have small-mindedness and left-sided pursuits. My God. That the vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival, uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions, ugly, ugly parodies of community. We could go on. This isn't the first time I have warned you. You know, if you use your freedom this way, you will not inherit God's kingdom. So he, you, there's a liberty. In the spirit of God once we believe. And you get to choose to use your freedom in any way that you choose to. But the word of God says that if you use your freedoms in this way to have your way, that you won't see the kingdom of God. Amen. That you're birthing something else. Amen. But if we but if we are, are in God's word, obedient to his word, if that's the word that we're eating, and if that's the word that we're obedient to, then the fruit of the spirit should be evident. Not only should we see it, but those around us should see it. They should see a change. Amen. And there were so many works of the flesh, but there's only nine fruit of the spirit. And, and But I tell you that it says fruit of the spirit, one. And that fruit is love. But the attributes of love is joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And to such there is no law. And when I check the message Bible pertaining to the fruit of the spirit, it said that, but what happens when we live God's way? The fruit of the spirit births in us and is seen through us when we live it according to God's kingdom standard, his divine way in his word. It says he brings, not you, but God brings gifts into our lives. Much the same way their fruit appears in an orchard thing, like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. God does that. He brings that into your life. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness perme permeates things and people. Holiness is still right. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments. Amen. You wonder why the marriage ain't work, why it can't work. You ain't committed to nothing. Amen. But that only comes forth from you doing it God's way. For there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. If you do it God's way, it will cause for you to stay. It will cause for you to be committed. It will cause for you to overcome. If you if you have a relationship, much relation, amen, and, 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 and you have prayer, you have the word and that commitment if you keep God in it. It can work not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Legalism is helpless 
and bringing this, this about, it only gets in the way. That means that we can't set up a set of rules outside of what God has instructed us to do, which is legalism. You'll find that in the church today that there is a whole lot of legalism going on. Among those who belong to Christ, everything connected with getting our own way and mindlessly responding to what everyone else calls necessities is killed off for, for good. It should be crucified. So the word of God tells us that the old man must die. The old man that wants to have his way. That's, that pursues his own, that has his own mindset, that man must die. You can't dress it up and present him to God and think that God is going to accept it. Huh? The only thing that God is going to accept is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That man must die. Hallelujah. This is a time to die to self. This is a time to die to your own way. Amen. This is a time to get aligned with the word of God and what of that the, that, that new heart that he put in you, that that can birth. Because when you water it with the word of Satan or your own words or man's words, amen, man philosophy, you will find that it's going to cause for something else to grow. Stop watering those things that was never meant to live. Stop watering those things that God meant that it should die. Jesus. Hallelujah. So now here we're talking about the word of God. And we find that Jesus himself, he is the word. Amen? The living word. He's the pre-existence word. He's the logos. Jesus, he is he who existed from the beginning. He was then and still is now divine. He was divine prior to coming into this world and wrapping himself in flesh. He was divine wrapped in flesh. And he's divine resurrected. Distinct from but in close relationship with God, I'm here to tell you that Jesus, he is God. He is the God man. He is the source of all life and the light. The light inherent in every human soul is Jesus. Let your little light shine. If Jesus is not being your soul, you have no light. Long unknown within the world, the word was made flesh. Filled with grace and truth. This is Jesus. Thus Jesus perfectly revealed the invisible God. He uttered God's mind. Those of us that have Jesus in our heart, if he's really in your heart, you should be uttering the mind of God. Amen. He declared his purpose. Those of us whom Jesus by his Holy Spirit is abiding in our heart, we should declare his purpose. Amen. And he meditated, he, he mediated his power. Those of us, there should be signs following the ministry, and we should mediate the, 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 the power of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So those of you on today that's even watching the video that have heard this gospel preach, hallelujah, be mindful of what words you eat. Be mindful of what words you're being obedient to. Search the scriptures, for in them it is that ye think that ye have eternal life. And they are the only thing that testify of who God is. The Holy Scriptures. Man can't testify. Only one that can testify of that is him that came from above. Him that descended is him that also ascended. And that is Jesus. He is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So we extend to you Jesus Christ. We're not watered down. We extend him to you in all of his sovereignty and his divinity. Amen. Hallelujah. Do we extend Christ to you? It is him that died on the cross for your sins. The love of God that caused him to come down 42 generations and die on the cross for your sins. He paid your sin debt that if you believe that you can have life. Because huh? right now the word of God says that only is there life in the sun. And outside of the sun there is no life. So we offer you Jesus on today. And if you heard this gospel preaching, you do believe. Just repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, here I am. I'm a sinner in my sins. Lord, save me. Make me over. Wash me in your blood. I believe that you are Lord. And that, you resurrected. and that you resurrected. Lord, baptize me, Lord, baptize me. With, your Holy Ghost with your Holy Ghost 
and fire in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And where you stand or sit, you will say. But don't just stand there. But go and find yourself a church where Jesus Christ, him crucified, his resurrection and Pentecost is being preached that you may be baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. For the word of God says that he who has not the spirit of Jesus Christ is none of his. Go in peace and sin no more and serve the Lord.